All right. Ajax, so um I'm going to give you a really really brief uh guide as to what you should be or what you could be working on uh right now. Well, for you and Jordan since you guys are both uh fresh boosted 110s. Uh you guys are lucky that you guys already have access to um the flight trainer's master whistle or whatever that what is it called? Lightmaster's Whistle, um, and you guys already have access to the world quests in uh, Broken Shore. Um, so I already explained to you about the world quests, um, but I'll I'll explain I'll I'll briefly explain it again just in case Jordan um, doesn't know about it. So you open up your world map, and um, you'll see here uh, the three emissary quests. They're called emissary quests. Um, there's three up, and let's say I do all three tonight, and they're all empty. Uh, these circles will be empty, um, and it'll be replaced by um, a message that says uh, a new quest, a new emissary quest will be available tomorrow. Because it's, uh, it's got uh, the maximum amount you have are three, and they're there forever. Um, and when you do them, uh, it's got a 24-hour uh, recharge rate. I believe I'm pretty sure uh, so yeah so you see here it's got high mountain tribes is the first one and you see these four exclamation points that means you all you have to do is four of any world quest that applies to high mountain tribes so for the high mountain tribes that's the Taran so their zone uh, I right clicked to zoom out on the world map is high mountain so you left click there to zoom in and um, Basically, any quest you see here, any world, these are all world quests. Um, any world quest you see here that you do, that you complete, will apply to High Mountain tribes. So you do four of them, um, and then uh, once you complete it, a uh, question mark will appear in the zone at the main flight path for this zone. So for High Mountain, it's here at Thunder Totem. It's being blocked over here. The flight path is by this icon, but it's right there. So you go there and you turn it into this female NPC Taran. Um, so yeah, so even if it says, like when you mouse over a daily quest, like let's say I, I mouse over this one and it says Snow Feather Swarm and underneath it, it says the Wardens um, instead of High Mountain Tribes. Now, even though it says the Wardens and you do that quest, you complete it, it will still apply to High Mountain Tribes because you did it in the zone that is for High Mountain Tribes. So just keep that in mind because it's, it's great, um, as I was telling you, Jakes, that uh, it's a great thing to, to figure out which quests can help you knock out two birds with one stone. So let's pretend this was High Mountain Tribes and this one right now says Army of the Light, but let's just pretend it says... Uh, the wardens. So if I were to do this quest, it would count towards High Mountain Tribes and the wardens. So that's bam bam. That's one quest for my High Mountain Tribes and pretend that's high one quest for uh, the wardens. All right, going back to here. So I already told you to install the add-in called Angry World Quests. So you'll notice that my world map is different, Jakes. It's because uh, if you look here, this is from the add-on that I use called Angry World Quests. It's a great way to, to organize um, all the world quests um, that you see in the Broken Shore um, zones, or the Broken Isles. Sorry, I keep getting confused with the Broken Shore, this zone here, and the entire place called the Broken Isles. And by the way, this is Argus over here. If you click here, uh, I'm on my alt to DK. I, I, I never really touch him, so I'm, I'm probably just like you guys. When you go here to Argus, it's all grayed out. I have nothing discovered. But yeah, so let me explain about Angry World Quests really quick. Um, so for this to work, what you do is you zoom out. You keep right-clicking until you get to the Broken Isles um, zoomed out map. So you see all of the Broken Isles zones. And then you see here, this is all from Angry World Quests add-in. Uh, you'll see... I can organize it to show me all the rewards right here is a list so let's say um, I want to do uh, I want to do to, by duration I want to sort them by duration by time left so time left six hours meaning in six hours these world quests will expire and they'll be replaced by new ones so 
Now it's going to show me all the world quests that will expire within the next six hours. See, look at the top, it says, uh, we read this one, it says advanced war wanding, and um, it says time left one hour. Do you see that? It says time left one hour. Um, so yeah, uh, but what I usually do is, um, I usually go as a fresh 110 character. I usually organize by loot. So again, you don't want to do it when you're zoomed in. Let's see, I just zoomed into the Azuna zone map. Now if I were to click on loot over here to organize it by loot, it's only going to show me the world quest that gives me loot in the zone of Azuna, which is just one quest so you see here. And it gives me the item level reward uh, gear. It says it's an 870 plus iron artifact relic. Um, so it's a relic and um, it says 870 plus because it has the chance of course to become Titan forged um, uh, which means it will be uh, it's got a rare opportunity to be a higher item level so instead of 870 plus it could be war forged at 875 plus or Titan forged at 885 plus 895 plus like that um, so yeah so again what it's 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 better to right, press right click to zoom out to get to this full zoomed out map of the entire broken isles uh, zones map and then I go to loot and as you see here all in purple is the item level so let's see I'm gonna press C to open up my character window my item my average item level equipped is 894 um, so, you know, I'm rocking like 880s, 885. So what I'll do is I'll look for my lowest gear, my lowest eye level gear. For you guys, since you guys are boosted 110s, I think it's 870 or 875. Uh, like you see here, I think my lowest is like 880. Yeah. There's a legendary right there. By the way, speaking of legendaries, uh, Jakes, I think you were confused about legendaries. You were, you were thinking your artifact weapon, like here's my artifact, Mob the Damned. You were thinking that's a uh, legendary, and you're asking, oh, they're going to get rid of legendaries in the next expansion. This is different. This is your artifact, your artifact weapon. Look at the font color of the the name of my artifact weapon. It's called Maw of the Damned. So if you'll know it's an artifact because it's, um, the color of the font of the name of that artifact weapon is like a tawny brownish color. Tawny brown or a, uh, a cream brown. I don't know. Um... And then uh, gear that is legendary gear, which is a rare drops uh, that you get from rare elite mobs or they drop from raids, from bosses. They drop even from dungeons, from five-man dungeons, especially mythic and heroic. Um, but I, I, I think someone drop, saw it drop in a regular normal five-man dungeon. Someone, two people in our guild actually looted legendary gear from chests, you know, just rare chests out in the world. But you'll know it's... Uh, a legendary piece of gear is because um, it's orange, like the gear, it's got an orange um, outline tint to it. And then when you mouse over it, you look at the tooltip, right there it says Acura Strapes, the name of the piece of gear, the legendary gear. So you'll know it's legendary because it's got a bright orange font color to it. Bright orange color font to it, and there's Soul of the Death Lord. <clears throat> so that's, uh, yeah, that's my spiel about legendaries. Um, so yeah, so what I do, again, so I zoom out, I'm in Dalaran now, so I'm going to right-click to zoom out. Oh my god, there's a, legend uh, a Legion Assault right there. These always do this, by the way, whenever they're up. I always miss out because of the time zone difference in being in Korea. Like, it always happens when I'm at work, but always do this. This is a great way to get gear. Oh my god, and it goes towards your, uh, your, um, order, your order hall um, advancement, you know, like the mission campaign and even the Broken Shore campaign, uh, the Legion Fall campaign. So always do this when it's up because once you do four of these, you, you, in fact you should do every single one that's available to you. Uh, you even see these when you're leveling up to 110. It's a fast way to level alts to 110. So starting at like level 100 when you are able to first come here to the zone of uh, Broken Isles zones, uh, this is a great way to uh, gain experience and power speed level your your level 100 plus alts to 110. So do all of them. So, um, so you see, you, I, moused, I zoomed out. You mouse over, it says Legion Assault, Belshara is under attack. Time left, five hours, 58 minutes. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna pop onto there on my, one of my, my mage alt probably, because it's a great way to speed level. Super, super boosted XP experience. 
So um, yeah, knock do all you do all of them, but you only need to do four of them, and you'll get a quest um, to fight like a mini boss, and you you enter a scenario. What a scenario is, it sends you and two other players, so a total of three players. It's basically like a dungeon, but it's out in the world, and it doesn't have there doesn't have to be a tank, a healer. It could all of you be DPS, and it, it's still viable. That's called a scenario. So uh, you only need to do four of these Legion Assault points, and you get a quest to do this scenario. It lasts like 10 minutes to 15 minutes, maybe even just 10 minutes to 12 minutes. It's very short. And you, at the end, you get some high-level uh, item-level gear. So yeah, uh, again, so uh, you don't want to... So look over here where I'm mousing over. You only want to worry about loot. So organize by loot, see? The, everything in purple font, that's the item level that uh, the reward you get is. So, and look for what you need. Like, they'll, sometimes they'll give you a relics, which are really hard to come by. Sometimes they'll give you trinkets or uh, finger uh, rings or cl uh, uh, cloaks or helmets, whatever, shoulders. So, I always go for loot, especially as a fresh 110 character. Next, you want to go for order resources because you're going to get a lot of quests that... Uh, and e e you're going to get a lot of quests that call for order resources, and especially your order advancement. They need order resources, um, and even for the Legion Fall campaign, they ask for a lot of order resources. And then your missions at your mi at your order hall, you know, the mission board or the mission table, um, those missions require order resources to do. And that's a, those are a great way to get gold um, and to get gear, mostly gold, but gear for your followers too. So this is important. So organize by loot. And then organize by order resources to see which quests give you a lot of order resources. Like, look at that. That one's a thousand. By the way, uh, you see I moused over this. It says the Nighthold uh, Gilded Guardian. And you see to the left of it, the, col the, the symbol is a green swirl. If you see a green swirl like that, that means it's a raid quest. It's a raid world quest. So you need to be in a raid to do that. So don't worry about that. Um, I don't think you can do that in LFR, but uh, I could be wrong. So yeah, uh, worry about loot, worry about order resources, of course gold, you want to make gold, um, though the best way to get gold actually is from doing the missions in your order hall, because once your followers in your order hall reach 900 eye level, you're going to be getting quests that the, 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 they'll give you two rewards, there's a chance at a second reward, the first reward will be like a thousand gold, and the second reward if you're successful will be like another thousand or two thousand gold. So the best way to make gold, if you're not into farming, is your missions at your order hall, but you have to level up your followers to item level 900 plus. Um, and then there's items. It's for for I, If you group by items, uh, it'll show you um, like crafting re uh, regions, like you see here, Blood of Sargeras, that's used by most all professions. And then Felwort, uh, wait, where is it? Felwort, that's used by um, inscriptionists and alchemists. All right, so that's world quests. Um, that's world quests for you. Now, uh, let me see what else do you need to do. Um, Broken Shore. Uh, if you if you still want to work on flying, Broken Shore is, is a huge part of that. By the way, not just Broken Shore. Um, you have to like you see here, Death Knight campaign. For you, it'll be Hunter campaign, or for Jordan, it'll be Monk campaign. If you really want to unlock flying in um, in Legion, I highly I, I highly advise against it. You, I mean, you can work on it afterwards, and I'll tell you why you why you would want to in a bit. But if you really want to, this is a big part of it: is Death Knight campaign or your class campaign. So you look in your map or your um, your uh, quest log, and also Suramar is a big one. Suramar is a huge huge part. A huge chunk of uh, unlocking flying on, uh, or well, in the Broken Isles is Suramar campaign, and the Death Knight campaign, and then Legion campaign. Legion Fall campaign is something else. I like. I don't think you have to do this one. Defend. Oh yeah, you do have to do that one. You have to. This one, I don't think you have to do the Deceiver's Downfall. That's a raid boss you have to kill. But I don't think you have to complete that for what I'm about to tell you now. So I'm gonna show you my desktop. Um, because a uh, reason why you want to work on the Legion Fall campaign is every class gets their own um, mount, their own class-specific special mount. 
So I'm going to swap to my uh, desktop. So the screen's going to freeze for a moment. I'm going to go to my desktop view. All right, so here you see it says class mounts, uh, obtaining the mount. To unlock your class mount, you have to unlock the broken shore via assault on broken shore um, scenario. Uh, that one, yeah, I'm pretty sure you guys have to do that as a fresh boosted 110. You have to complete all the steps of breaching the tomb, which are all those quests you see there that I've uh, moused over, I'm hovering over. Complete the Legion Fall campaign. You see armies of Legion Fall. That means you have to reach... Uh, it used to be Exalted with Legion Fall, but now they changed it to Revered with Legion Fall. So not so bad. And then um, you have to complete your um, Class Hall campaign. I told you about that. And you have to have recruited your very last follower. So you'll get a quest for that. Um, but I believe your followers have to be at level 900 plus eye level by then your followers that is um, and so for you as a hunter Jake's you get trust of a fierce wolf hawk oh no sorry you are beast mastery so you get tome of the hybrid beast and that will unlock your mount so there's different color tints um, let me show you yours tome of the hybrid beast this is your color oh wait no 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 sorry 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 I'm confusing you First, you get, um, hmm. that's for something else. That's not a mount. That's for something else. I'll explain to you. Anyway, your, your mount is going to look like this. Sorry, not that. It's going to look like this. Here. I think that's the first color tint. Uh, it's going to look like that. That's definitely your mount. I'm not sure if that's your color tint, but uh, I'm fairly sure because it's like a plain color. Um, I wonder what. Okay, so that's, it's, yeah, it's it's called the, uh, what is that called? Dire Wolfhawk. It's a Wolfhawk. That's your mount as a hunter. So only hunters could get that mount. And then after you unlock it, you can do certain things to unlock the other color tints or color variations like this one. I really like that one. Look at that. It's green. That one's amazing. And then here's the other tint. It's like a gray, a drab gray. I really like this green one. I'm not sure what your default, your first color tint will be, but that's your mount when you unlock it. And for you as a beast mastery hunter, you get something else extra. It's called uh, Tome of the Hybrid Beast when you fully unlock Power Ascended Achievement. It says, un if you see I moused over it, it says unlock every artifact trait for a single artifact weapon after empowering it. So remember that quest I told you about in Silithus where you can maximize your um, your artifact weapon? You got to do that for this, for Power Ascended. It's a super, super quick uh, shortcut. You're lucky. We didn't have that back then. They just added it now. I, I myself haven't done it. Um, so you should do this. Power Ascended, it will, uh, sort of, you, you, for you as a Beast Mastery Hunter, you get Tome of the Hybrid Beast, which it says, uh, it says use effect to learn the secrets of taming Feathermane, a family that includes hippogriffs, griffins, owlcats, wolfcat, uh, wolfhawks, and wyverns. So you as a Beast Mastery Hunter will be able to, uh, tame those beasts when you complete this Power Ascended achievement. And... That's the first picture I was telling you. Is this this is a, a, a owlkin or whatever? Um, you can tame these wyverns. This one, that horde. You remember the horde wyvern? Uh, you can uh, tame hippogriffs. There's many colors, not just this stupid looking pink purple one. There's other colors too. Uh, but yeah, so that's an extra for you as a beast mastery spec hunter. So yeah, that's uh, obtaining the mounts now. Um, Every, like I said, every class gets their own mount, and if Jordan's watching this, you get Ban Fu, and you also get an extra. So this is, monks also get an extra thing. You get a companion pet, which is a miniature version of, of uh, this guy, Ban Fu. Let's open a link in a new tab. Uh, by the way, jo Jordan, or, well, yeah, the monks, their class mount talks. It's the only mount that talks to you. What is this? Oh, this is the companion pet. Sorry, that's the companion pet. That's not the mount that I clicked on. That's weird. But uh, the mount looks into orb uh, necklace. Mm. 
Okay, so that's the class mounts. Um, right here, cub on food. Why is it not showing me? Well, I'll just scroll the way down to monk. Oh, here! This one! This is what your mount looks like as a monk. And this is the one that talks to you. <laughs> a lot of people are annoyed of it because it talks. I'm not sure if you can turn off the talking. It's got to be a way, though. But yeah, that's uh, that's the class mount. So you could work on that, too. Um, going back to the game, let me swap to the WoW view. All right, so we're back in the game. Now I'm going to show you what you guys need to do, uh, kind of like your chores, apart from world quests. So every week, uh, let me show you on the map where I am in Dalaran. Uh, we are here near Krasis, uh, Krasis Landing, uh, the flight path here in Dalaran. You see over there all the people. You want to go over here to the Violet Hold. I'm going to get on my mount. This is a Sky Golem mount. Uh, and there are two sides to this area. I'm going to explain that side later. Here is your weekly quest every week. It, ch it resets every Tuesday. There's a new weekly quest. It just so happens that this weekly quest kind of sucks because it's a PvP one. It says win 10 arena skirmish battles. And look, you get an artifact power. By the way, don't worry about artifact power now because it's the end of the expansion. And like I said, you can do that quest in Silithus that will maximize your artifact weapon to the fullest. I mean, I, I, I guess you would only want to get artifact power just for your off spec. But it shouldn't matter anymore because they're getting rid of... They're making artifact weapons useless next expansion, Battle for Azeroth. Basically, they're only good for transmog. So don't worry about artifact power right now. Um, this champion strong box, that's PvP gear. Of course, that's the reward because it's win 10 arena skirmish battles. But every week, every Tuesday, you want to come here and check out what the new uh, weekly quest is. The best ones, I think, are the ones that give you the raid gear. Um, the Like the uh, complete 20 world quests and you get uh, a, a, che a chest that has guaranteed level 930 raid gear. Um, there's another one where it says complete four, or I think it's five, um, five time walking, and another. There's another one that that is complete five uh, mythic uh, dungeons, and you also get the same chest that's a guaranteed raid quality uh, gear. So 930 uh, plus eye level. Now this side, um, Archmage Landalock. He gives you a daily quest, not weekly. This is day. Uh, well, actually, greetings. Well, yeah, it is. It's, it, it is kind of weekly because basically what it is is it says looking for a seal of broken fate. Now, if you open up your currency tab, you press the U letter on your keyboard, or you could just press C to open up character window, and right there to currency at the bottom right here. Uh, you look over here, it says Seal of Broken Fate. I'm mousing over it. Total maximum, it says 5 out of 6. That means I can get one more for the week. So you can only have 6 of them at all times, and you cannot go over the 6. And it says Twists Fate to provide an opportunity for additional treasure from Legion Raid and Mythic Dungeon bosses. So you want to use these. So at the after killing a boss in a... After killing a boss in a mythic dungeon and in a raid, uh, you, you'll have a pop-up window that gives you the opportunity to expend or to use one of these Seals of Broken Fate. And what it is, is it's, just, it's essentially a bonus roll, an extra roll, an extra chance at obtaining gear. So sometimes it's gear, sometimes it's just artifact power. So uh, now you know what the Seals of Broken Fate are used for um, so there's three ways to get them to obtain them you can use order resources you where you spend a thousand order resources or um, you can spend gold or marks of honor marks of honor you get from PvP so let's see what's my gold count like 12,000 I'm so poor order resources I have how many do I have I have 20,000 we'll go with order resources so I'm gonna go for order resources I press continue and I get one seal of broken fate. And as you can see here in my uh, thing here, notification, I now have six seals of broken fate. And it says total maximum six of six. I cannot go beyond that. 
and um, uh, I guess it's color uh, blue as a daily quest because if I were to spend one, I think I can go back to him. No, never mind. I'm wrong. I'm wrong. I cannot go over six. Uh, but if I were to talk to him again and I didn't pretend I didn't have five of six and I had like zero of six, I could keep talking to him and keep spending more order resources or more gold to get more um, uh, seals of broken fate. All right, so that's that. Now, um, another very important uh, currency is the distilled titan essences. So if you go here, you will have a quest. I think in, as a boosted 110, you're going to get a whole bunch of quests just automatically pop up on your screen. One of them will send you here to Arcanomancer uh, Vrigil. Vridial. He's a blacksmithing trainer. Um, you talk to him, and uh, you see, let me browse your goods. So after you turn in the quest, um, it's just a talk to him quest. That's it. Let me repair while I'm here. You see here it says, um, uh, do not worry about Awoken Titan Essence. That's for people who are playing before this last patch, 7.3.5. Don't worry about that. Never use that. Because any legendary that you get, that you guys get, that drops for you, will automatically be level 1,000. Um, so this is what you want to get. Purified Titan Essence, as you can see, it costs 1,000 Awakening Essence. Uh, and where do you get these Awakening Essence? You get them from doing the... Uh, so you see these uh, Emissary quests that I was telling you about earlier? Um, uh, they will, I believe, they'll at, after you turn... So let's say I did High Mountain Tribes, I did all four of these, and I turned it into the Emissary. Uh, at, she'll give me she'll give me um, two chests. One chest is uh, actually she'll give me a chest, one chest and one like artifact power token. So the chest you open the chest and it gives it has a bunch of goodies in there like gold and um, sometimes gear, sometimes crafting regents, um, and it'll also give you wakening the the wakening essences. So I believe it gives you 30. I could be wrong, but it for sure gives you Wakening Essence. So if you do three Emissary Caches, that's 30 Wakening Essences times three. So you get like 90. And uh, like if you talk to him again, remember it says they, it costs 1,000 Wakening Essence. So the other way to get Wakening Essence, not just from these uh, Emissary quests, is from your dungeons, the first heroic dungeon that you do every day gives you Awakening Essences. So let me show you how you do that. So you press I on your keyboard to open up the pre-made groups uh, window. You're going to go here to Dungeon Finder over here. And then Random Dungeon, uh, you want to make sure it's Random Legion Heroic. Because if you just do Random Legion Dungeon, which is super low level, it's not going to show up here in the Rewards section. So make sure it is the random Legion Heroic. And look over there. You get Wakening Essence. You get 30 of those. You get 30 of those. So every day, make sure you do this. It's a fast way to obtain uh, Awakening Essence. Every day, do that. The first random Legion Heroic dungeon you do is a guaranteed 30 Awakening Essence. Um, and again, if you spend 1,000 of that, you can buy a Legendary. And <laughs> this is what everyone wants in WoW. Um, now, word of caution. When you are getting a leg... Hold on, let me just greet someone in the guild. Alright, so... Um, before you... So, you can buy it just fine. Let's say I had a thousand Awakening Essence. Right now, I'm at uh, 936, so I'm quite close. Uh, let's say I buy one. And it's going to appear like this, like a token in my inventory, in my bags. Uh, before I right-click it, it's very, very important that what you do is you right-click on your character portrait. So for me, I'm using an add-in, so it's right down here. You see a tied script. So I right-click on my character portrait. And this is very important for legendaries. Loot specialization. You can choose from different options. The first one is current specialization. That means the current spec you are in. Right now I'm in blood spec. Or, in case I forget my mind, and I'm often switching specs between tank and DPS, 
I want to just do blood. Or let's pretend even though I'm in tank mode, but I don't want tank legendary gear because I already have pretty good tank legendary gear pieces. And instead, I want to work on getting the good um, legendary gear pieces for for my blood sp uh, for my uh, frost spec. I simply change to frost. So that's very important that you do that because before you get a legendary to drop you want to make sure that your loot specialization is always set to whichever spec that you want to get the legendary piece that you want so I'm gonna put it at blood for tanking so yeah uh, that's about legendaries um, now to find out which legendaries are best for your spec I'm gonna uh, so the the monitors going to let me go to a quiet place. Oh, by the way, uh, when you're doing world quests and you're killing like rare elites, you'll get a currency called this one, curious coins. Um, now the only way to spend curious coins are over here at Zurios, this vendor over here. He's at this uh, north northern part of Dal uh, Dalaran, next to the Horde Wing Bank. Um, oh, I've, okay, I've seen that before. But he'll, every day his, his wares will change. What he sell changes. Now, the best thing, like, there'll be toys like this, like a rocket horn, whatever. There's some profession crafting stuff. Excuse me, I need to drink water. The best thing to get, though, is a mount that he sells called the Arcadian War Turtle. Uh, I believe that's the name. It's this War Turtle uh, mount. It's really cool. It looks like it's got a furnace or a, like a forge on its back or some f kind of fire. Um, but it's obviously not here today. But yeah, so that's that. Uh, now, I'm going to uh, tab out and I'm going to show you something on the internet. So let's swap to my um, desktop screen or capture mode. Now we're going to go, this is a very, let's get out of here. This is a very important uh, website. It's called Icy Veins. So it's icy-veins.com. You see here at the top. And you're going to want to go to World of Warcraft. Click on World of Warcraft at the top. They also do Here's the Storm, by the way. Okay, so we're here at World of Warcraft. You're going to want to mouse over to Classes. And then uh, one thing, just a, just a side note. Okay, so let's say Beast Mastery for Jakes. You go to Beast Mastery. Open the link in New Tab. If you're wondering what your rotation should be and you want it to in text form and you don't like to watch YouTube videos for video or video guides you can go here like there's a class overview and you want to go down to um, here look for uh, builds and talents let's open that link in a new tab and you're gonna want to go to rotations cooldowns and abilities it's a great place if you don't if you're not into the video guides on YouTube about your rotation what your rotation is for DPS as single target or AOE. Um, this is a great place. Like, see here, Beastmaster, Hunter, single target rotation. You can read up all that. And then here we have multiple target rotation. Okay. Now, uh, let's exit out of that. That was quick and easy. Now here, what did I click on? Oh, yeah, Specs, Builds, Talent, and Pet Talents. So for here, you scroll down, and it'll give you a summary of uh, which talents are best for raiding or for uh, um, five-man dungeons, especially mythic dungeons. Um, See, so it'll give you really nice uh, detailed explanations which talents are better for raiding or for five-man uh, mythic dungeons. Um, you see it says like check mark, X, check mark, and they'll explain why. So that's that. Now, here's another thing you want. This is what I was wanting to show you is you want to go to gear legendaries and best in slot do you see that so you're going to click there now as a beast mastery hunter they're going to give you your the recommendations for what are the best tr uh, legendaries 
for either raiding or for five man mythic key pluses. And here it is, Legion Hunter Legendaries. The best ones are right there at the top. So Shadow Hunter's Voodoo Mask. So um and read them, because sometimes the the very best one's not at the like I don't know why this one's up here. I think this is just good for it's a incredibly strong legendary from a survivability standpoint and it gives a lot of secondary stats which is a significant boost to dps as well i guess that's a really good legendary then so yeah they'll sh put them all in or uh, descending order from most powerful to least powerful so if you get a legendary this is the first thing i do when i get a legendary drop for my characters i come to icy veins i go to my class and i go to the legendaries to see which uh, to see if the legendary that I got is uh, pretty powerful or not. Because there's some useless legendaries. Alright, so that's that. And we are going to swap to game capture mode. So there's going to be another pause in this screen. Alright, we're back in WoW. So um, now... I already talked to you about legendaries. So let me talk to you about uh, Argus. Um, well, first, let me tell you what you can do here in this menu. So again, to get to this menu, press I to open up the Dungeon and Raids menu. Um, so there's player versus player. There's mythic dungeons. This one will just show you the guild best. Like our guild best was Lonely Lark, and it'll show you the highest key that he did was 16, level 16 key. And it'll tell you the names of the people in his party. I don't think any of them are guildies. That's Lonely Lark. He's our guildie. Uh, player versus player. I don't do much with this. Uh, dungeon and raids. So I already told you about Dungeon Finder. You want to do Le uh, Legion Heroics. Just the first one for Awakening Essence. Don't bother doing it again because the, the rewards are not worth it. But you could do it just to practice your DPS rotation. But I'd rather you practice that on target dummies. I guess you could go into the heroics just to practice mechanics but i'd rather you do that in a mythic so what you want to do well first of all raid finder lfr look for raid you're going to see all the noobiest noobs and you're going to see a lot of toxic players in there all the noobs all the toxic players mixed up together i don't like lfr i never liked it i never liked the concept because you get a whole bunch of toxic people and a whole bunch of noobs and you put them together in a 30-man raid and they just fight and they just they just fail. It's so bad. If you're wondering why the toxic people go there, like the the elite raiders or the elitists, why they go there, it's because they're there for legendary drops. Because yes, legendaries have a chance to drop from LFR too. And they also go there to get uh, defiled augment runes. I don't have any on me right now, but what it is, it's it's kind of like a flask, but it's like a stone that you use. It's it's a buff. All right, so I already told you about Dungeon Finder. I told you about Raid Finder. Raid Finder, definitely do LFR if you have the patience for it. I'd say uh, each quarter, because they separate, they, they break them up into quarters, uh, like three bosses. Sometimes it's two bosses. Like you see here, Antor and Taurus, the Burning Throne, that is the most uh, current raid tier. That is the current one. So they've split it up into different segments. So you see the first... First one is three bosses, second one, three bosses, third one, three bosses, last one, Seed of the Pantheon, only two bosses, the two final bosses. So you can pick and choose which one you want to go to. And uh, you can only do this once a week. I mean, you can go in, but you can only go in once a week to each quarter or each segment to get gear. Because let's say I do all of this and I want to it this week and I want to go in again. I can do it, but I will not get reward. I will not be awarded gear. I don't have the chance at new gear. So definitely do raid finder LFR uh, for a chance at LFR gear, and it's a great way to gear your your character to get yourself gear. Because if you look here in Atlas loot add-in, uh, I told Jake's about it. Jordan, you should get it. It's really good. Uh, you go to select module Legion. You go to select subcategory. You go to Antorus the Burning Throne, and you go to Raid Finder. There's Normal, there's Heroic. My guild, we do Normal, and we're, we're progressing on Heroic. Um, but Raid Finder, I clicked on Raid Finder, and you'll see the gear is 915+. plus. Again, the plus sign means you have a chance at getting Warforged gear or Titanforged gear, much higher eye-level gear. 
Um, yeah, even LFR gear, even Raid Finder gear has a chance uh, to get Warforged. But yeah, the baseline uh, item level gear that you get from Raid Finder is 915+. plus. Now, if you do normal with me in the guild, baseline is 930+. plus. If you do heroic with me in the guild, baseline is 945+. plus. So, by the way, Raid Finder, I'm not sure if you guys can do Antorus. Maybe you can. I think you can. If Blizzard's smart with their boosted 110s, I think they should make you available to do um, Antorus right off the bat. But just in case you can't, you'll know because if you mouse over, like let's say you mouse over Light's Breach, it will be gray. It will not be white font. It will be gray font. And then if you mouse over it, it will tell you what item level you need to be able to join it. But uh, you should be able to do all these other raids. All these other raids are the earlier raids for this expansion Legion, the Burning Legion. So Emerald Nightmare was the very first one. These also have great uh, transmog gear. So Raid Finder is also a great way to do the older raids of this expansion for uh, transmog gear, you guys. So yeah, you want to do Raid Finder and um, like again, as, as I said, if you have the patience for it, it's a great way to practice too, but you're going to get annoyed. There's a lot of elitists, there's a lot of noobs. But do it because you get the Shattered Sachet of Cooperation. That shows up, by the way, in Dungeon Finder and Raid Finder. If you are a tank or a healer and they need tanks and healers, you get this, basically it's a bonus sachet of bonus stuff. It's usually gold and augment runes. And then you get artifact power tokens. Don't worry about that. Gold is, eh, it's trivial. But yeah, Raid Finder, if you... If you're wondering, um, Jake's like, oh, should I do Raid Finder? Because what if I'm always being called downstairs or whatever? Raid Finder takes, like, the bosses, like, each segment, like, say, let's say I'm doing, um, Light's Breach. Uh, I'd say it's, like, t depending on the group, because sometimes it's a super fail group. It'll last, like, 15, 20 minutes, maybe even 25 minutes tops. That's Raid Finder. Um, now, pre-made groups. This is down here. You're going to use this for questing. Let's say you're doing world quests that are pretty hard, pretty tough, like it's a rare elite and you can't kill it on your own as a DPS. You come here to questing. You can do start a group and type in the title, the zone, um, and some details. Minimum eye level if you don't want to get noobs with you. You can at request voice chat and then type in Discord right there. Um, let's go back. You can do, okay, say, pre-made groups. Let's go back. Um, or you can do find a group. This is even better because you can just type in the name of the quest. But what I do, I'm lazy. I just scroll down and I look for the name. And it'll say give you a number of how many people are in the party because, again, the max is five. So pre-made groups, let's go back. So that's you can use it for questing. You can use it for dungeons. Now, if you click on dungeons, this is how you do your five-man mythics. This is how you do your five-man mythics. Um... Now, I don't do high keys, the key plus, because the mythics, uh, if you don't know, is there's zero, that's the baseline mythic, where it's still harder than, uh, it's still harder than a, a Legion dungeon, and it's still harder than a Legion heroic dungeon, a mythic dungeon, it's much harder than those two difficulties. Now, a zero is the baseline level, it's still harder than heroic and normal, uh, but it's still doable. Now, once you get to... Uh, now, if you do a Mythic 0, at the end of it, you'll get a Keystone to drop. Sometimes it's a level 1 Keystone, a level 2 Keystone, level 3 Keystone. Like you see here, it's COS means Court of Stars plus 2. That means it's a plus 2 Keystone. Plus 2 Keystone. Once you get to plus 4 Keystone, I believe, or maybe after that, that's when you start getting affixes. And affixes make them super hard Mythics. Uh, dungeons like you'll get something called bursting uh, I don't know what the names of the other affixes are like bursting I'm not sure exactly what it does but I think it's just like when you kill a mob it explodes so you don't want to kill all the mob like a, cr a group of mobs you don't want to kill them all at the same time because then they're all gonna explode and you guys are gonna die so you want to stagger their deaths kill them off like one by one or two at a time <laughs> most likely one by one if it's a high keystone I don't do high keystones because um, I'd rather do them with guildies, but because of the time zone difference, I'm never there with them unless we're ra are on a raid night, the weekends. So, But the guildies, they usually do them, so you guys should join the guildies. They'll, they're really nice about it. They'll help you guys out. Um, uh, yeah, so once it gets to plus four keystone, that's where it gets the affixes. It's super difficult. 
So yeah, you can use, let's go back, you can use pre-made groups for questings, uh, well, for questing and for dungeons. Um, now in the, when you're doing your order hall campaign, um, and then if, if you're, if you're wanting to do the fly, unlock the flying, you're going to get quests that require you to go to mythics, to mythic five mans. But it's just baseline mythic. You only need to do mythic zero. And there's not a lot of that. But usually if you go to pre-made groups and you go to dungeons, find a group. If you see someone type the title, it'll say um, chill group. Those are usually the, the people who are very friendly and they're okay with wipes. They're not there to compete. They're not there to have to like really race. So look for the titles. It'll usually say chill group or it will say mythic zero, like the number zero. All right, let's go back. Pre-made groups, uh, raids, legion. This is what my guild does when we need to raid people. Raids legacy. This is what a big one for you guys if you're looking for transmog raids, of old, especially old raids where uh, you don't know how to get there, like raids from Missa Pandaria or raids for uh, Warlords of Draenor or you're not a mage and you don't know, you, you can't port there. This is the best way, like you do find a group, or let's say you want to start a group. You start a group and you put in like Warlords of Dran you, you do the raid you want to do, like Hellfire Citadel, um, and like Mythic or Heroic Normal. Now the, the gear changes, like the, the, the loot, the color changes. So look through Atlas loot, see what colors you want, if you want Normal, Heroic, or Mythic, because sometimes it'll be green or, or, or violet or pink even, or gold. All right, let's go back. Now... This is a big one, custom, find a group. And I'm going to explain this. You see this? It says invasion point. This stupid ass can't spell. Um, you'll see greater invasion point. Let me explain those to you. This is a great tool for you is pre-made groups, then customs, find a group, and look for the invasion points. Let me explain what that is. I'm going to press map. And I'm going to right click to zoom out. We're going to go here to Argus. Left click. Now, look, like you guys, I have not explored this area, but I still can see um, these greens. So, like you see here, I moused over it. It says Invasion Point, Bonic, and time left is 2 hours 50 minutes. So, an Invasion Point is you have to run over there and you have to enter the portal physically. You have to go there. It's not like a raid where they have a summon stone and people can summon you. Or, I, 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 I'm assuming, well, Warlarks can summon you, but <laughs> I guarantee you're not going to find people patient enough to summon you over there. Because these things are quick. Like, the longest one I've ever been in took, like, three, four, m five minutes tops. You just go in there, and you'll get, like, some objectives, and you, you're basically just killing stuff, killing demons. And then a final boss demon will appear, and you need to kill it. Make sure you tag that final demon, otherwise the... The quest objective will not count for you, and it's a great way to get uh, gear and like order resources, you name it, nether shards. So there, you see invasion points. Invasion points you can do every day as long as they're up. Let's go to uh, Antorn Wastes. Now look at this invasion point. You see it's got a skull on top of the green portal over there. You mouse over it, it says Greater Invasion Point, Mistress Al Aluridil. That's the name of the boss. So it's a raid boss when you go here. Before you can reach the raid boss, you have to kill a whole, bu whole bunch of uh, packs of mobs, and then you get to the final raid boss. Um, and you see, you see it says time left, 3 days, 49 minutes. Greater invasion points, you can only do once a week. So just keep that in mind. You can do the invasion points every day as long as they're up, and you can only do them once each. But greater invasion points, you can only do once a week. So make sure you do that. Um, because uh, when you're doing the questing in Argus that you get from the Vindicar spaceship, they will have you go in for invasion points and whatnot. So that's a good thing to do. By the way, these gold things, those are teleporter pads um, from the Vindicar, or tele light forged beacons is what they're called. They're essentially teleporter pads because they don't have flying on uh, Argus, but that's, that's what's similar to a flight path. All right, so I already explained that. Um, so you want to go... But by the way, so again... Uh, when you're joining a, an invasion point or a greater invasion point, before you join the group, make sure you run physically and enter that portal before you join a group. Because if you join a group first, they're already killing the boss by the time you get there. So keep that in mind. Uh, let's go back. All right, I explained it, everything you need to know for pre-made groups. Now let me see if there's anything else you need to know. Hmm... Yeah, that was a very, very long um, 
very very long uh, ketchup guide but here's the barber shop in Dalaran um, you can get your hair cut there you can change your skin I don't think you can change your skin color now no oh yeah you can hmm uh, but yeah um, and oh yeah I'm gonna show you the transmog vendor sometimes you're lucky you'll see people with this mount the Grand Expedition Yak, and you can just repair on this side, you can use the transmog vendor on that side. But if no one is handy, then you can come here to the enchanting. Simply, It's called Simply Enchanting. It's over here in this part of the Dalaran. And the transmogrify, trans transmogrifier is here. And you can transmog your gear there. Alright? So that's that. Now, another key point of interest is... Oh, by the way, for the world quests, Dalaran is my favorite one to do. Those are the easiest quests to do, and they're pretty fun. They have some, like, platform kind of jumping ones. Um, well, it's really like you're flying through the air. Um, Dalaran is the easiest world quest to do, because instead of four world quests, or emissary, Dalaran, uh, Dalaran, uh, Dalaran is the easiest emissary quests to do because instead of four world quests you can you only have to do three and they're usually all like in one zone like if i come to azuna there's like three delaran quests all in one zone i can knock them all out and at the same time these quests count for prince ferrandis uh reputation or emissary quests so they're the best because it's you only have to do three for delaran and the turn in for that is right here in delaran this guy over here war mage silva all right, so another key point of interest is over here, the Worgen Quarter, the Grey Fang Enclave, rather. You're not a mage. This is your portal room. You have all the portals to the all the Alliance capital um, cities, Alliance faction capital cities. Now, uh, over here at the very cent the very center of Dalaran, it's called the Chamber of the Guardian. You see this teleporter pad. You simply stand on it, and you'll get ported down below. <laughs> Alright, and here we are. We are now in the chamber of the Guardian. The portrait room. Aptly named. Alright, so you see here, uh, this is where all the... Uh, what are these called? What are they called? Pillars of Creation! The Pillars of Creation, like, lore-wise, they were used to, like... You know what? I don't even know. They're just really powerful artifacts used by the Titan Keepers, which were created by the Titans uh, to protect Azeroth, both Azeroth the planet and Azeroth the sleeping Titan underneath the planet. It's quite confusing. But uh, the, the Pillars of Creation, I've already unlocked the Hammer of Norganon there. I've unlocked this, the Tidestone of Golganeth. I've unlocked the Tear of Loon. The only thing I have not yet unlocked is from Stormheim Zone, and that is the Shield of... Jeez, I forget what it's called. Shield of Tear? I forget. Or Shield of Algonaut? I forget. I forget. But that's the only one I need to unlock, I, I think, I believe. That's why it's glowing. Yeah, that's the only one. So, you'll have quests to drop these off here to safely secure them. That's for your Order Hall campaign. So again, you're looking at your uh, map and quest log. The one, there, you have different campaigns. You have the Legion Fall campaign. You have the Suramar campaign. Again, that's for flying. All of the Sumer, Suramar campaign, that's for flying. And then you have your... Death Knight campaign for you, Hunter, or for you, Monk campaign. And then you're also going to have the Artifact. The Artifact, just your Artifact, this one, your Artifact weapon. By the way, I'm not sure if you guys know this, but if you open up your 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 uh, character pane or character window, you come here to your Artifact weapon, you shift, right-click, and it allows you to view your, your, artifact, uh, your artifact menu. Or artifact interface um, you cannot spend your artifact knowledge points here um, this is just a way for you to view your artifact uh, traits uh, you have to if you want to spend the points you have to actually go to your order hall but what you can do is you can replace your relics here so 
if you had a relic you simply drag and click and it's going to give you a notification message saying oh do you really want to destroy the old artifact and you say yes so that's what that's for again to do that you do um, shift and right click on your artifact weapon in the character pane character window now this is the last thing I wanted to show you was this in the portrait room down below uh, these this is the other portal room uh, you have uh, this is really only handy when you're doing the uh, the other quest to unlock your other artifact weapons. Remember, they're not legendaries, they're artifact weapons for your other specs, like let's say for your other DPS specs or your tank or your heal spec. You come down here, you'll often have quests and these will be, they'll be uh, pretty conveniently located within these portals. Like they're, these, or, or these portals will be convenient like shortcuts to get to those to access those old areas of Azeroth. Like you see here, this is the portal to Caverns of Time, portal to Shatroth. Uh, this is also good if you're not a mage and you want to do old transmog raids on your own and you're not going through the... and you want to solo them, you know, and you're not doing the pre-made group and raids legacy. You're not doing that. You would just want to solo. This is a good thing if you're not a mage. You can just also use these portals if they happen to be shortcuts to those areas that you want to access. Uh, word of caution, you see this this uh, dead or this sign of death? It says warning drop. That's the portal to Dalaran Crater. That's the old Dalaran in Hillspread Foothills. So if you take this portal, you're gonna fall to your death. That's why you have to use a goblin glider, which is an item, or you can, if you're a mage or a priest, you can slow fall, whatever. Boomkins can do that too. Moonkin druids, balance druids. All right, I think that's everything I wanted to say that's important for you guys as a fresh 110 character um, it's quite lengthy but I think that's everything you need to know so I know you guys are uh, interested in um, uh, working on unlocking the race the allied race requirements so if you ever have any questions just go to Wowhead Wowhead is the best place for for questions like that Wowhead and the other website I told you was ic-banes Dot com that's a good one for your um, that's a good one for your uh, class for whether it be le what legendaries are good for you or um, your DPS rotation what talents you know what talents to choose again to get to your talents you press letter N you click here on talents and then you have honor talents that's PvP talents all right so that's it um, hope you guys found this guide useful it's super long it's probably better that you would listen to it while you're probably doing world quests uh, in game. All right, thanks for your time, you guys. Uh, I'm really glad you guys are back. I'm really stoked. It's going to be exciting, the three of us. All right, take it easy. This is Tide signing off.